Hey there, puzzlers. My name is Fleb, and today we're going to be continuing our journey to learn about logic puzzles by taking a look at the third puzzle from the U.S. Puzzle Championship, which is a Masu puzzle. Let's take a look at the rules. Masu puzzle is an example of a loop-type puzzle. So you're starting with something that looks like the board to the left here, and you're drawing a loop that goes through every single one of these circles. Just one loop, not a second loop, just a single closed loop. And then when it goes through each of the circles, there are certain properties that it has. When it goes through a white circle, it must go straight through the circle. So that would be okay, and this would be okay, but something like this, where it turns, would not be okay. In addition, in one of the squares here, on either side of the loop that passes through the white circle, it has to turn. It could turn here, it could turn there, it could turn both ways, but it has to turn in at least one of those squares. The black circles have their own rules too. So for a black circle, the idea is it needs to extend at least two squares in a direction, then turn 90 degrees and extend two squares that way. So let's take some of this stuff out of here. So for example, this one here could go like this and this, or it could go like that and have the other line going up instead. It could keep going as much as it wants to, or it could turn. Either is fine. It's worth noting that the letters here are not used in the solving of the puzzle. They're just used for entering the answer. There are similar letters on the large puzzle, and those also are not used. With the rules explained, let's take a look at the main puzzle. As you can see, the main puzzle has a ton of circles. So we're going to need to find a way to break it down to different parts. For starters, we can look at a region where the white circles might be really constrained, namely the edge. If a white circle is on an edge, the line can only go through it one way. For example, with this circle here, the line can't go vertically, because it would have to pass through and it would go outside of the puzzle. So we can immediately fill in things like this. Now remember there was a rule that the loop had to turn in one of the squares outside of the white circle. In situations like this, where they're bridged together, the loop must turn out here, otherwise it wouldn't turn. That gets us some more of the loop. Still just thinking about the white circles. This white circle here must have its loop path go vertically can't go horizontally because it's blocked off on one side. That's like the edge. And it must turn. The rule that it must turn gives us something also about these big groups of white circles. So if you imagine the line could go horizontally here, at which point it would have to go through all three of these circles. But when it does that, note that it doesn't turn on either side of the square of this metal circle. So you, whenever you see three white circles in a row, you can't actually have a line that goes through all of them at once. Instead, we know that line has to go down like this, which gives you the other two. When you have two white circles with a line going through them like this, you know it has to turn on both of these outside squares, because this white circle needs to turn somewhere, and it doesn't turn there, and this bottom circle needs to turn somewhere too, and it doesn't turn there. So I'm just going to mark these with X's these lines here, just to remind us that these have to turn. We don't know which way they're going yet. Here's another set of three white circles, so we know the lines have to go this way. And a little X goes there. All right, so now let's start thinking about the black circles. Black circles near edges also have a constraint, much like the white circles do. One way to think about the black circles is that they need to have a segment going left or a segment going right along with a segment going up and a segment going down. You need to place two segments on each of these black circles, and you can't have up, down, or left, right because of the 90 degree turn. So in a situation like this, where you see that it can't extend to the right, you immediately know it has to go to the left. And when it can't extend down, it has to go up. And similarly for all of these black circles here, none of them can go down on the bottom on the second to bottom row, so they have to go up. This one has a similar predicament. Now that we have that line, this white circle 
can only go one way, which makes this black circle need to go down. There's a similar thing here, where it can't go to the left, it must go to the right, at which point this white circle is constrained. This has to turn to stay as a part of the loop, this has to go up, and we're starting to get a few things here and there. This can't turn anywhere, so it must go here. This must go down, and this must go to the right. Now let's think about what would happen if we closed off the circle by putting a horizontal segment through it. Well, we leave a little piece of the loop left here that couldn't connect with anything. And remember, we're making one closed loop. So that's impossible. And instead, this has to go vertically. This here has only one way it can go, horizontally. It can't turn here, so it has to pass through and connect there. This loop edge has to escape, as does this one. That can't go up or it'd be trapped. It must go to the left. It's worth noting that now this white circle here doesn't turn in this square, so we should put a little X here just to remind us, so we don't mess that up later. This black circle must go left. What if this black circle went up? Well, it would pass through two white circles. Whenever you see a straight line going through multiple circles in a row, you can think there might be something going on there. If this goes up, it has to go all the way up to this square here, and then this white circle doesn't turn in either of its surrounding squares. So, it must go down instead. Just like the situation in the upper right corner, we have a situation here where if this goes horizontally, this loop edge is trapped in that corner. So it must go vertically. Now if this circle here were to go vertically, this would actually connect with itself and make a second loop. We're making one closed loop, so this has to go horizontally. Note, it has to turn there. And we also know this circle. This has to come out. And note that if this edge here goes up, then it can't actually escape this region without making a second loop. It can't connect directly to that black circle, because it needs to extend at least two edges. So therefore this goes down, this has to go to the right, and this comes out. This has to go down, and now we're starting to get somewhere. My eyes are drawn immediately to this white circle here, because it seems to be connected to an area where we have quite a bit of stuff already. If this were to be vertical, like this, it would have to turn in this square, because it doesn't turn in the square above it, but it can't turn either way. So this has to go horizontally. It has to go one square to the left, and now it has to turn here. This also tells us that this goes down, and if this were to go right, it would make a second closed loop. So it has to go to the left. And this has to go to the left as well. Let's follow this edge out to here, and that connects up. This connects here, that tells us these white circles. This has to escape in both directions. That must go there, this must connect across, this comes down. And now there's an interesting question of whether we can connect these two here. And the answer is no, because this actually forms a closed loop. And we need to get the rest of these pieces and circles inside of it. So this is going to go down, this will go down to here. Note that this black circle has to go at least two squares to the right. Now the next piece of intuition has to do with this region here. We have two ends of the loop, one here and one here. And if they connect right away, that's going to be a problem. But there's actually a lot of pieces that have to turn here. What if, for example, this piece was connected like that? Well, this would have to turn and come down like this. This would come to the left. That would come down. And then this end of the loop would come down and make a closed loop. Oftentimes in puzzles like this, it's not necessarily random where you try something like that. We know that there was a lot of twisting that was going to happen around here. That all came out of the assumption that these two connected here, so they must not connect at all. Which gives us quite a bit more of the puzzle. These can't connect, and that comes down. These loop ends are now pretty far apart, 
so we're probably not going to be doing anything with their closed loop logic for a while. Let's take a look at these instead. This can't go up, must go down. This can't go up, or it'd be trapped in that region, so it must go down. And same with this one. That means this is horizontal. And here we have what is probably the most difficult piece of logic in this puzzle, at least the way that I solved it. If this piece of the loop were to go up here, it would have to go through this whole region, and that would cause these to form a closed loop by themselves. But that's not only true of these particular four, it's true of all of these sets here. So this line actually goes all the way out to here, which also tells us it turns here. That tells us this black circle goes to the right, as does this one, as does this one. And this one must go to the left. Once you have that, you know quite a bit about these white circles. If this were to go all the way through, this white circle would not turn, so it must go vertically. Now if this were to go vertically through these circles, this circle would not turn, so it has to go horizontally. And that must go vertical there. That must connect up. This can't turn, so it has to go here. Now this has to turn, so it doesn't connect there. If this were to go down, it would connect up and make a closed loop. So instead it goes up. This goes up as well. That connects there. This comes over. This still has to escape. Comes up and to the left, and that connects there. Now we know quite a bit about these black circles. They're horizontal segments because of this here. That goes right. That goes right, 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 and left. This goes to the right, that comes down, those connect. Which means this can't go down, because it would have to go up to the right, and then it would form a closed loop with itself. So instead it goes up, connects up there, this connects there, and now we just have this tiny region here that we need to settle out. Which way are these going to be turning? Well, if you think about the segments we have left, we have four segments here. This one still has some logic left, has to go to the right, and then it can't actually go any further, because there's no place for it to turn. So it has to connect up, and that tells us exactly how these go. And there you have it. These sorts of puzzles are really wonderful. I really enjoy drawing paths inside of a grid, and working with different logic about which way the path can go, how it must close, and the different properties that the circles have. There were a lot of comments in the last video that asked me for my recommendations about different puzzle companies, and there's two that I would really highly recommend. The first is the one that actually made this puzzle, which is Nikoli, a Japanese puzzle company that has done amazing puzzles over the years. And the other is Grandmaster Puzzles, which is run by Thomas Snyder and has a ton, just a treasure trove of free puzzles online. So if you're looking for more puzzles of any logic type, especially Masi, which is very common, I would check out those two companies first. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like, subscribing to the channel, or following me on Twitter, at FlebPuzzles. Thank you once again, and as always, happy puzzling.